Today we're looking at something that I've wanted to look at for a while. It's taken me a little bit of time to get my hands on one, but we have an Intel Arc. This is the A750. You can also get the A770. There are a few differences which I'll cover as we go through the video. But this is currently about £239. You might notice as well to my side I've got a very old graphics card. This is actually my first graphics card I ever bought back in 2010, Twin Frozer 2. It's nice to see that we have some more budget cards on the market and coming from Intel of all people as well. So we now have some more competition brings down the prices of consumers so it's only good things so let's run you through the main differences as well between the a770 and the a750 the main one being that the a750 has got eight gigabytes of memory over the 16 that you'll find on the a770 the a770 has also got slightly more cores and units in certain areas i'll put them all on the screen if you have a little pause so you can have a good read through so here we have the a750 now you might have noticed as well that this is the limited edition version. That basically means that it's in-house made by Intel rather than going from somebody like ASRock that make one or Acer have one as well. Um, so that's just basically what the limited edition means. Now we've got it out of the box. First impressions, very heavy for the actual size and kind of budget of the card, which I was very surprised at. But generally speaking, weight does indicate quality. So that's always a good thing. Intel also have their own AI technology, much like AMD do for their FSR and also DLSS from NVIDIA. So you do get higher frame rates and image fidelity with just a couple of clicks. So we will test that out as well. We've got a 225 watt TDP on both the A750 and A770. So you won't need a high power supply, about 550 is kind of minimum where you want to go but I would recommend go for like a 750, maybe even that 850. Then you've got a bit of headroom if you want to upgrade maybe your CPU down the line, or if Intel bring out like the B series, for example, and you want to get one of those, then you've got the headroom already without having to buy another power supply. And talking of power, this card's got an eight and then a six pin for PCIe power. The Intel Arc logo there looks like it's going to light up as well. On the end of the card, we've got a couple of brackets if you want to add a support for any sag. It is quite heavy, so that might be something you actually need to think about, which is rare for budget cards, but this certainly does feel like it's got good quality to it. On the back, we have a Arc A750 limited edition. Like I said, that's the in-house. That's why it's saying limited. This has a 2050 megahertz base clock with a 2400 megahertz boost clock. Like I said, eight gigabytes of memory, GDDR6. We've also got 3,584 shading units, 448 execution units, 448 tensor cores, and 16 megabytes of level two cache. Now around the back plate and also around the fans, you've got a more soft touch feel material. Can take grease quite easily, just something to be aware of. But more often than not, when it's going to be in your system, you'll be able to notice it and just give it a wipe off anyway. Connector wise, we have got a HDMI 2.1 and then we've got three DisplayPort 2.0. So you can do up to four monitors if you wish. And that's actually pretty impressive considering this is a more affordable graphics card. I can't actually tell how many heat pipes that this has got in it because the fins are so dense. Um, but it is a two slot card as well. So it's obviously very well packed together. But I think we're just going to whack this into the test system and see how we get on with frame rates and things like that. Also show you the RGB that's on the card as well because I don't think there's that much we can really say because we've had a look around the card itself, told you the specs and things. So I think we just need to do some testing. So first game we're going to do is Cyberpunk, which is going to be likely our most demanded one of the titles that I'm going to benchmark today. So I'm going to push my luck a little bit and start off with 1440p, just because a lot of people are liking that sweet spot that 1440p gives for especially price and performance that you get from your displays as well, not too expensive, unlike 4K ones. Let's just see what we can get away with. I'm going to use a medium preset. I'm going to turn XESS off just for now, just to see what the kind of raw frame rates are. And then we shall dabble with the super sampling. Actually it's 60 frames, which I'm pretty surprised at. I was expecting a lot lower for even medium 1440p. Still about 50 frames. So, you know, we are getting high console frame rates, which is not too shabby. That's doing a lot better than I thought it would, to be perfectly honest. So let me just enable XESS. And I want to say a balanced preset to begin with. Let's go 7.5 and apply that. So around 80 now. 70. So for one setting, that's given us a considerable jump. Let's just put on now onto performance and apply that and see how this benefits our frames. So now we're onto performance to get about 80 frames. Just future Jordan jumping in here. I did actually want to add a little bit more information for you guys that want to know about 1080p results over 1440. I re-ran all of these tests at 1080p 
after recording them at 1440 and saw an improvement of about 25 to 30 frames as an average across all of the games that I tested that you'll see in the video. So for anyone that's wondering about using a lower resolution, there you go. So for Dirt 5, we're going to use a high preset to start with and just see how we get on. Again, running 1440p. Excuse the jank for this one, but it doesn't like OBS recording and running the game at the same time. So I'm going to do a little bit of live screen gameplay like it's uh, like it's 2008, um, but running about 80 frames a second at the moment. Not too shabby. Hitting the jump as well. Always good. Breaks, 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 breaks. But again, much like Cyberpunk, even on a high setting, we are hitting those 80 frames a second. So pretty, da oh, that wasn't good, but our frame rate certainly is. Get around 80 frames. Of course you can turn the settings down a little bit if you want a higher frame rate, but certainly 80 is very nice and smooth. So I'm gonna run a medium setting for Far Cry 5 using the benchmark. Again, 1440p, but we do have that limitation of the eight gigabytes of VRAM. So I don't wanna to go too hard on it. Say in the corner there, we've even got the VRAM warning so I don't want to go too nuts and expect performance that we're realistically not going to get so let's see what we get for a medium 1440p again we can always try it at 1080 if this doesn't work so high 1440p we've got a average FPS of 72 a high of 83 minimum of 64 so a little bit lower there kind of console frame rates but again this is one of the more demanding games we are running as a generalization if you're going to be running 1440p then i would go for lower settings just to make sure the game's going to have enough vram because obviously that's kind of our limitation here but of course if you're going with the a770 you have got that 16 gig which will help you out a lot more especially with games like this that are a bit more demanding so for crisis remaster we're going to go for a medium setting i don't want to go too hard as this is again quite an intensive game not as much as the other ones we've tried but still nonetheless it does has some intensive areas to it 130 frames 126 that's actually really good i was a lot that's actually a lot more than i was expecting straight out of the bat so i've now gone up to high just to see what kind of frames we get with that as it was doing such a easy job at um, medium settings now we're at around 69 nice frames um 70 my aim is atrocious but still sitting 60 frames so i'm going to get console kind of frame rates at a high setting not too bad though but again if you're happy with medium you're going to be touching around 100 frames so even better still personally i'd be more than happy with the medium settings for something like this anyway um and again wiped out but pretty good i'm actually very happy with the results of that especially at 1440p i thought it was going to be crippled but it's done very well so our last game is going to be Apex Legends and I'm going to go for a high preset with some of the things such as anti-editing and texture streams going up a little bit just to put as much kind of quality in as we can. Those are all the settings if you want to have a quick look before we actually get into the game. We are into the firing range. It does seem a little bit juddery to be perfectly honest. I think that's possibly a VRAM issue though. But oh, about 100 frames a second. I think it just takes, there we go, it seems to take a little second to get everything loaded in but everything is a lot smoother now first and foremost before we actually get into the results and things i want to apologize for the kind of jankiness of the footage for the benchmarks obs had a little bit of trouble trying to record and play the game as well we are limited to eight gig of ram on that card so there's a lot for it to process and also the htcp was an error for my capture card as well and i couldn't find a way to disable it so couldn't get direct capture couldn't get obs for capture so we had to go for the classic uh, retro recording the screen so hopefully though it gives you an idea of the benchmarks that we got through the games and for the majority of them we got around 80 fps even on a high um, setting which was very good certainly did a lot better than i was expecting so very pleased especially for 1440 you can now see the intel arc logo is all lit up as it's in our system powered on i like that it's just a bit of white lighting as well nothing crazy with rgb or anything like that got the side panel on now that's just where we're doing the testing we've got a high temperature on the card of 81.4 and then with the room temperature it gave us a delta of 57.3 so all in all pretty good temperatures we do see cards that go higher than that it is on the warmer side for a graphics card but certainly nowhere near what it can do as a maximum i've been actually pleasantly surprised with this card um certainly for the 1440p aspect like i mentioned getting nice 80 kind of frame rates on all the titles that we played you can of course turn those settings down a little bit if you want to uh, get some more fps if you want to go for maybe 120 hertz monitor or something like that but for the majority of people 
that have gone maybe from a console to making their first budget PC, you're well above that 60 frames. So I think very good. We're going to do some more testing in some builds we're going to do with this card. I'm not going to leave it just as this because I didn't cover that many games. If there's any want covered in a full build, then do let me know and we'll cover those in that. It's going to be going into that NZXT H1 primarily and that's going to be coming up very soon. Um, so get subscribed and do the bell so you don't miss that. So yeah, any more questions, leave them in the comments. Any more games that you want featured in the build, do add them down below. But I'll leave links to it and all the information in the description if you want to check one out, maybe pick one up. But for £239 at the time of recording, I am pretty impressed. So looking forward to doing some more content with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you to Intel Centers out for me to look at. I'll see you all in the next one.